Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, Timothy Nivakoya, and I'm going to play some uh, flute from the Southern Plains. So everybody sit back and meditate and enjoy this. But uh, before I start, I'd really like to uh, tell you the story of how the instrument originated with the uh, Southern Plains Prairie people. Uh, a long time ago, uh, there was a, a young man and uh, anyway, there was a mysterious sickness within the tribe, and he had lost his family. And anyway, uh, during that time, he really mourned hard, and it was like the wound in his heart couldn't be healed. So he drifted from his people. And anyway, during that time, he uh, went to sleep under a cedar tree and had a great dream. And during that time, in the dream, the great spirit had come down and visited him. And he was telling him about this uh, strange instrument. And during the time he was being told, well, he had heard this uh, music that was being played. And during that time, the great spirit told him, a flute you will make. And through this, he said, the wound in your heart will be healed. So anyway, when he woke up the next morning, well, the wind was blowing. And he began to realize, well, hey, this, you know, sounds really familiar. So anyway, he realized that this uh, sound was coming from a cedar tree. So he climbed up and he found where the, uh, the birds had pecked holes into the wood and he began to realize, well, this was what I had seen. So he went ahead and got the branch down and he began to remember the instructions of what he was told. And that was how the first flute was produced. So then he began to teach himself how to play. And during that time, he was restored and made whole. He began to create music and he mourned no longer for his family, and then he began to uh, uh, come among his people again. So during that time, he began to tell others, you know, what had happened, you know, and this great thing that had uh, happened to him. So that's where the Native American flute had come from. It had originated that way. And that story was told among the Comanches and the Cheyennes and various uh, Northern Plains tribes. So nobody really knew who this gentleman was but they all shared a similar story and there was a uh, different variations that was told but it produced the same thing so this is the music that comes from the southern plains
Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. This next instrument has a really uh, deep tone to it. And anyway, uh, the majority of the flutes that I'm playing here were uh, really uh, played during courtships. So these are Southern Plains uh, courting flutes, and they're uh, six-note hole instruments. And they were very common among the uh, Comanche people. Whenever uh, a young man was interested in a lady, well, he would uh, either have somebody make a flute for him or he would make it himself. And then whenever uh, there was an opportune moment, well, he would play the music. So if he wasn't able to speak to her, well, the flute gave him another voice and a new language, which really was uh, probably a language of love in his own personal way. But anyway, this was really how he expressed himself. Okay, now, the instrument I'm getting ready to play is a uh, river cane flute, and this was uh, most uh, prevalent among the uh, eastern tribes. And also, you know, uh, it's been introduced to me, so anyway, it's a really nice instrument. It has a very uh, distinctive sound. So, but this comes from the uh, Choctaw and Chickasaw people.
Okay, now this next song uh, is probably based upon uh, traditional Indian music. Um, a long time ago, the uh, Comanches, whenever they went on a, a long war journey, sometimes during those journeys, they would all sing together. You know, and uh, the leader of uh, the war party, well, he would start a song. And there was uh, one uh, chief that was most prominent among the Comanches, and his name was Wild Horse. But anyway, there was a song that he sang, and my dad used to play it. And my dad was, uh, uh, his name was Adop Tate Nibikwe, and he was one of our great historians of the Comanche tribe. But he used to always tell us his story, and he played a song that uh, emulated the song that was sung. And uh, it's a, it was a war journey song. But anyway, Dad had found a way to compose it on the flute. So that was really what traditional Indian flute music was based upon. So this is the, uh, the song. Okay, and this will be the last song, but uh, this is one that uh, I uh, play whenever, uh, you know, uh, really, the music really has no titles to them. A lot of them don't. I pretty much will play the way I feel. Um, I think that was, uh, you know, best expressed, and I believe that's how it was with a lot of the uh, earlier flute players. You know, uh, the, the Comanches, they used the instrument uh, to relax, uh, also, you know, the story I told you earlier about the courtship and also, um, you know, other, uh, the medicine men, they had different purposes for it. You know, uh, some of them, you know, uh, it was a very spiritual thing for them. And uh, to us, you know, this medicine, the music was like a medicine. It was almost like it had the spirit of healing. So anyway, this is one of the songs that I, I like to play because it uh, really evokes a great feeling. So I hope that you all will enjoy it, and uh, I hope that all of you uh, got something out of this. But anyway, this is it. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much. You've been a really nice audience. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the program. And uh, hopefully you guys uh, will come over and visit the art booth. A friend of mine by the name of uh, Tim Sawpitty, he's probably one of our great Comanche artists. Uh, make your way on over there and uh, say hello to him and look at his art. But thank you very much. <laughs>